Hey, Andy here from builderhottub.com. In this video, I'm going to explain Sparpak wiring diagrams. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so this video is a little bit different in that I'm normally stood by my beloved green screen. But in this video, as we're going to demystify the Balboa wiring diagrams for spar packs, I thought it'd be more useful to actually jump on the computer and, and kind of show you through a, a wiring diagram rather than doing it at my green screen. So here we are on the computer. So let's dive in and take a look. Okay, so this is a typical wiring diagram that you receive on the inside of a spar pack or in the box if you're replacing a circuit board. And this is for a BP7, and I'm not going to go on about the specifics of the particular model. What I want to cover in this video is more the, the generics that you can apply to any of the spar packs that you're looking at or the circuit boards that you're replacing. So let's start with the actual power itself. Now, the power shows the power block and over here, and it actually shows the uh, the inputs coming in. So we can see that it's showing the, the white, the red, the black, and the ground. So that's obviously gonna come from your split system uh, if you are in the US, and that's to give you the 230 volts. What it means when it says a dedicated 230 volts, that's 230 volts that's supplied over three wires rather than four. So if your 230 volts is coming from your split system, you'll have two hots, a common and a ground, you've got four wires. That isn't a dedicated 230 volt supply. Now, if you're not sure, always consult a qualified electrician. I'm not an electrician, I'm a hot tub guy, and I'm doing these videos to explain how things work rather than give you uh, electrical advice. Now, the next thing is really to, to make sure that you're setting the spar pack for the correct voltage. So on the Balboa packs that have that dual voltage capability, you've got a jumper over here, okay? And you can see that that was set for the, the 240 volts. It's not just that jumper that is important. Each of the inputs, so things like the pumps, the circulation and the ozone here, they can actually be configured on certain packs for different voltages. So what that means is you can have perhaps 230 volts on your heater, you can have a, a big jet pump on, uh, on J9 here, which would be pump one, and that could run on 230 volts, but you may have a smaller circulation pump or an ozone that could run on 115. So you can actually configure the system to, to change that. And how do we do that? Well, you can see that each of the pumps here has a corresponding connector. So generally they have a fuse that is associated with each of the uh, inputs and then there's a cable which will dedicate the voltage that's required to that particular input so what do i mean well if we look at j20 here so j20 is actually associated with the circulation and the ozone now because J20 is showing as a solid line here, if we you know, trace that solid line all the way back, that's taken us to what's called group two on the board. So group two is the, the 230 volt grouping. So what that means is by having a jumper from J20 to group two, the voltage of these elements here are going to be 230 volts. In order for us to change that, we're going to need to unplug J20 and then take it on the on the dotted path up to group four at the top of the spar pack. So by moving the jumper on a particular input, 
you can see exactly how we can change the, the voltage for, for that input. So how do we know how to do that? Okay, so there's normally uh, multiple pages in the, the manuals that you need to look at to understand exactly how everything works. So we're looking for something that's going to tell us about the jumper settings to be able to change the voltages on the different inputs. We don't see anything on this page, so if we scroll to the next page here, I've got a table on this side that's telling me exactly what I need to connect. So you can see here that J9, 240 volts, and it's got to be connected to group two. So if J46 here isn't connected to group two, but it's connected to group four, then that's gonna be 815 volts. So let's have a look at our example with the ozone and the circulation pump. So that's that's down here. And you can see that J20 had to go to group two for 240 volts. And if we follow that down, you can see here, it tells you that the circulation pump can be 120 volts if we move it to group four, which is exactly what we did in that previous example. So setting the voltages of the, the individual components is, is obviously really important on a, a circuit board layout. So setting the voltages for the individual components is obviously really important for your circuit board and for your spar pack to actually work correctly. So the next thing that we really need to think about with a circuit board and a spar pack is how do we actually configure the pack to run with the kit that we've got and this is one of the questions that i get asked uh, an awful lot certainly on the replacement part market but also on the on the brand new builds and plugging everything into uh, a new spar pack so you can see that on the uh, on the boards that it's talking about here and it's talking about here all these different setups. So, so what are they? Well, if we scroll down and just move me out of the way here, you can see that this particular spar pack has anything up to 32 different setups. So this is the BP7 and there's loads of different options for this model. Now, I'm not gonna go into the specifics. However, the, the same rules apply to, to all of the different spar packs out there. So you need to identify what you have plugged in or what you're going to plug into your spar pack. And the common mistake is to forget about this column here, which is circulation pump. If you have a dedicated circulation pump okay so a dedicated circulation pump would be a small separate circulation pump and in this scenario you'd be plugging it in here to j21 you're going to need to make sure that in the settings you actually have a circulation pump present so just because it says programmable filtration and polling that means that there's a circulation pump in there, okay? It's not for a two-speed pump. So you've got a dedicated circulation pump in that particular setup. So what if we had a dedicated circulation pump, a single-speed jet pump, and a single-speed blower? Okay, so that's a really common setup in terms of hardware that, that you would plug into a spar pack. So let's go and work it out. So we're looking for something in, in this column here that's gonna have a circulation pump present. We're then looking for something in pump one that is one speed. We're looking for none in the other columns and we're looking for a blower with one speed. So as there's only the first eight, it's definitely gonna be one of those. And if we look through, we're looking for a circ pump, a one speed and a one speed. So for us on that example, this would be number five. So you've got to know exactly what you're plugging into your spar pack before you can select 
the correct setup. And what happens is if you don't have the correct setup, the buttons won't do what you expect. So if you press the blower button or the AUX button on your keypad, for example, nothing might happen. And if nothing happens, it's because you haven't set the right mode for your blower to be connected. So reading the, the spa pack information, the manual, and actually setting the, the correct parameters and the settings mode is, is really important, okay? So how do we do that? Well, it really depends on the type of um, topside control that you've actually got and also in the brand that you're working with. So with the Balboas, uh, it might be a key press combination, and I've actually got a video on my channel about that. I'll put a link to that underneath this video. But also, if it's a Gecko, for example, this all this setup is done in the low-level programming, they call it, which is basically done on the on the top side control. So it really depends on the uh, on the different model. But again, you know, it, it will tell you in the manual. So I'm in the manual here, and there we go. Changing software setups. So if we're using a Spa Touch, this is how we do it. And if we're using a more conventional button keypad you know, here's how we do it you're pressing the the warm warm and then you're going to press light and then you're going to keep pressing warm until you get there but you've got to have that dip switch number one in the on position as uh, as as indicated here okay so i do have a separate video on that so i'm not going to go massively into that one i do want to jump back and uh, look at the the dip switch settings because this is something as well that, uh, that i get a lot of questions on so the the dip switch settings on uh, on a balboa pack they they show them like this okay and what that refers to is it actually refers to the dip switches which can be found in the upper right sometimes they're red sometimes they're black but they're tiny little switches and you need to flick those on or off to get the various settings on some of the older spa packs you use those to actually configure what's being connected on the newer spa packs, it tends to be to do with voltages and, and what's going to run at, at, at certain times. So let's go ahead and take a look at what the dip switches on this model are, are telling us. So I've got a table here and this is going to be corresponding with those 10 dip switches. And as you can see on this particular model, 8 through 10, there's nothing going on. So the test mode that's the settings mode that we saw that we need to put the, the dip switch number one to the on position if we're going to change the, the programming setting. So what about the next set? Well, A2, 3 and 4 are really to do with how much current you have available for your spa pack to draw. Because what it's going to do is if you have you know, two, three or four pumps connected, and if you don't have enough current, it will trip the breaker. It's pretty straightforward. So what you can do is you can use the dip switches to actually limit the amount of current that's drawn. And you do that by basically turning off the heater when a certain number of pumps are running. So in this case, if we had dip switch four on, that would mean that we could have all four pumps running, but then the heater as well. Now, if we didn't want the, foot, the heater to come on when we had our fourth pump running, what we could do is we could set, for example, number three on, and that would only allow two high-speed pumps to be running while the heater is running as well. So when you would turn on that third or that fourth pump, the heater would turn off simultaneously so that you didn't draw too much current into the pack. So it's it's pretty straightforward, but it you know it's it is explained there. But as we know, manuals aren't always the the clearest of things. Now, the other setting I want to draw your attention to is this one, which is the the memory reset. Okay, so if you do need to just reset that pack right back to factory default, you can flip the A6 in this case up to the on position, power it on, and it will totally wipe all your settings and you can start back from fresh. Okay, and lastly, with the circuit diagrams, 
it's really to do with kind of when you're doing your programming, but I'm gonna I'm gonna visit it here is what the different inputs do on different settings. So this spar pack here is talking about J14, which is a, an auxiliary input, which is here. Now in certain setup modes, you're gonna plug your blower directly into that. So you can see here that in setups one through eight, so if we're using any of the first eight modes on the table here, then it's gonna be the blower that plugs into J14. So why do I bring that up? Well, on this particular pack, the expander board has a connection which says uh, on one of the connectors, which we down here, it actually says blower. So it can be really confusing that you, know, you end up with a blower plugged in here, but if you're on setups one through eight, this is redundant and you wonder why your blower's not working. So you know, having the, the pump plugged in to the, to the right input for the right setting is, is really important when you're configuring that spa pack as well. And lastly, I'm actually gonna talk a little bit about cables and plugging them in and how you read the, uh, certainly on the amp connectors, which are, that's an amp connector, this, uh, this little white connector here. Now on an amp connector, two out of the four sockets have a flat on. Now that flat refers to the leg here. Okay, so if I just uh, if I just zoom in a little bit on this particular diagram here, okay, so you can see that at the bottom there's kind of the, the the legs are going to the right that indicates that the flat on the on the cord is going to be on the right hand side so why is that important well you've got to get the pins right and again i've got separate videos on uh, on the pins and i'll, I'll put that uh, a link underneath this one but for example this is a dual speed cable on this particular board because the flats are to the right the ground would be on the on the top. Okay, so it would go ground, common, low speed live, high speed live. Okay, so the the flats on the on the actual connectors. So I've got a I've got a three speed oh sorry a three cable uh, connector here. So that would be the same. So the flats are on the right hand side. So if I was plugging this into the circulation pump. In this case, the ground would be on the top because the, the flats are, are pointing this way, okay? So the flat would plug in, ground would be on the top, ground common, space, and then live at the bottom, okay? So getting the, the right pins, and and just to show how, uh, how that can be different, if we look at the AV socket here on this board, the flats are on the other way so that would mean that the ground pin in this scenario would be on the bottom okay so you can tell by the orientation of those particular pins how your cables should be in those amp connectors i hope you've found this video useful if you have please do subscribe to the channel uh, of course hit those notification icons to be notified when my videos go live as always i appreciate the view thanks ever so much for watching and i will see you on the next video if you've liked this video please do like share and subscribe to the channel i'll see you on the next video